Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 1 the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord so this is God in the tenth year of Zedekiah king of Judah last one which is the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar see God gives us dates we have dates of month day and year if God wants us to know the date and all that, He will supply it. There are people out there, they're dating the rapture, they're dating events that Jesus said, no one knows but the Father. And then there are people making up dates like, you know, uh, the birthday of Jesus. For then the king of Babylon's army besieged Jerusalem. So, Surrounded by Jerusalem is Babylon and the Chaldeans. Jerusalem's going bye bye. Judah is going bye bye. It's going to be destroyed. And Jeremiah the prophet was shut up. That don't mean be quiet. Shut up in the court of the prison. That means he was locked up in jail, which was in the king of Judah's house. What a place to have a prison. Now, when Joseph was put in jail, he was talking about a prison where Pharaoh's prisoners were kept. This jail is in the king's house. For Zedekiah, king of Judah, had shut him up. So Jeremiah is put in jail by Zedekiah. Well, I don't think Zedekiah is going to get any favor towards God. I think Zedekiah is going to lose his eyeballs after he watches his sons get killed. Wherefore dost thou prophesy, saying? Now this is the this is why Jeremiah is in jail. Thus saith the Lord. Now never mind the rest of verse three, verse four. In verse 5, Jeremiah is in jail for the word of God. Jesus was crucified for the word of God. Peter and John were put in jail for the word of God. Paul was put in jail for the word of God. John was banished to the island of Pat Patmos for the word of God. You know why Christians won't preach the word of God? They don't want to suffer for the Lord. They know the story enough in the Bible to know, well, if I do that, that may happen to me. Listen, I have been threatened to be put in jail. I had a circumstance with, with, with the farmer's market in Daytona Beach. My lawyer on the phone with the police department. And the police officer told my lawyer, I will arrest him if he starts talking again. And my lawyer said, you're going to be in trouble. Well, I don't know. But, you know, no, you're wrong. And it got to the point that the police I don't care. And the phone was handed to me and my lawyer says, I don't know what to tell you to do. If you want to continue to preach on the sidewalk, if that's where you're preaching and your video shows you're preaching on that sidewalk, you give me a phone call when they when they put you in jail, I'll take care of you. Daytona Beach, Florida, 2021. I told my lawyer, I said, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go home. You work out with the city attorneys, which they were wrong, but you work out with the city attorneys and blah, 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 and I'll be back here next week at the team. That's why Christians don't want to do. Alright, so he shut up in the court of prison. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. Now, Zedekiah has put Jeremiah in jail for, for that statement that God made to Jeremiah to speak. Did you read what was going on in verse 2?
You would think at this point Zedekiah would come to jail. All right, let him out. Uh, Jeremiah, we're in trouble. Jeremiah, you're right. The, the, the Babylon's outside our gates. But man gets so much in pride and so much in sin that God ain't correct. And listen, I'm, I'm speaking about a couple of pastors I know. You're not going to tell them they're wrong. Though Babylon is outside the gates or their sin is plain and simple. You're not going to tell them they're wrong. And Zedekiah, king of Judah, shall not escape out of the hand of Chaldean. Jeremiah is preaching against the king. But shall surely be delivered to the hand of the king of Babylon. Guess what's going to happen? And shall speak with him mouth to mouth, and his eyes shall behold his eyes. He shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall he be until I visit him. God, saith the Lord. That's not Jeremiah visiting him. That's God, saith the Lord. Though ye fight with the Chaldeans. All right, you, if you're going to put up a battle, ye shall not prosper. Do you know we are in the same condition, America, as Judah is? And do you know that Americans will fight? Do you know that American Christians will pick up a weapon and fight? And God may be like, that's not what I want you to do. You haven't been doing right. You're not living right. You're not properly right. You're delighted to see in church age. You think you're wonderful. You think you're great. I'm calling in the I'm calling in the enemy. I'm going to destroy you. You would think Zedekiah would go back in Jewish history. History repeats itself, though you change it. Because there was a point in time that Moses sent 12 spies in the Kadesh Barnini. And they came back, two of them said, hey, let's go. Ten of them said, no, we're not going to, there's giants in the land, we can't do it. But well, let's turn around and go home. And two of them said, no, you know, we're in the hands of God. And God got angry. And I'm, you know, you read the whole story, but it got to the point that God said, I'm not fighting. And the, and the people of Israel said, we're going to go fight. We're going. Moses, tell them I'm not with them. And God, Moses said, Look, don't go up and fight. And they went and went and fought. But the ark of the, of the Lord stayed with Moses in the camp. They went up and fought and they got their butt kicked. History repeated itself. Zedekiah never, never saw it, never remember it. You can't go as long as America's going and expect that God's going to bless you. I don't care all you say, God bless America and one nation. You can say whatever you want. Well, I said a couple weeks ago, and I, I like what I said, I can call myself a fire hydrant all I want. I can walk around, I can go to stores, I can go wherever the place I want to go. I can say, how you doing? I'm a fire hydrant. And the fire department can come up to me and say, you ain't no fire hydrant. Now, if there's anyone to know what a fire hydrant is, it ought to be the firefighter. And there are Christians walking around, we're doing right. We're doing great. We. Have you read what Jesus said in Revelation chapter 3? Are you not reading and studying what Jeremiah said? Remember, they told Jeremiah, well, we're not going to do it. We're not, we'll get more into Jeremiah. Uh, verse 5. And he shall lead Zedekiah to Babylon, and there shall he be, until I visit him, saith the Lord. Though he fight with the Chaldeans, ye shall not prosper. And Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. All right, whole new thing. He's in jail. Remember what Jeremiah has been preaching. Behold, Hanamiel, the son of Shema, thine uncle. So this is Hanamiel, Jeremiah's uncle, son. Shall come unto thee in jail. 
And by the my, my field, that's in Antioch, that's where Jeremiah is from. That's a land in Benjamin given to the Levites. For the right of redemption is thine to buy it. Do you recognize that word? That's what Boaz did in Ruth chapter 4 to the, to the one that was closer kin, though he's unnamed. He says, there's a right of land of possession. You're the redeemer. He goes, yeah, I'll do it. But then he mentioned about Ruth. He said, well, I can't do it. That will mar my inheritance. You see, history's repeating itself. So America can change it all at once. It's going to come back and bite you. The right of redemption is designed to buy it. So it's in Jeremiah's hand. So Hamiel, my uncle's son, came to me in the court of the prison. He's in jail. According to the word of the Lord. It's all God. He said, buy me to buy my field. I pray thee, that's in Antioch which is in the country of Benjamin. For the right of inheritance is thine, and the redemption is thine, buy it for thyself. Jeremiah has no other wife or children. Then I knew that this was the word of the Lord. You know what's going on here? Jeremiah is in jail for preaching the word of God. He's been preaching in He's been, he goes to jail for preaching the Babylonian army is coming to destroy Jerusalem, destroy the, the, the area of Judah, and Benjamin's in Judah. And he's put in jail for it. Okay. So God comes along while Jeremiah is in jail for the word of God that Babylon's coming, and Babylon's outside the gates. His uncle's son comes up to him, buy me this piece of land. I thought the land's going to be given over to Babylon. I'm in jail because I said Babylon's coming. Babylon's out there. Now, Lord God, you send my uncle's son to buy a piece of land that We're going to Babylon. And I bought the field of Hamil, my, un my uncle's son, that was Antioch, and weighed him the money, even 17 shekels of silver. I subscribed the evidence, everything needed legal, and sealed it, and took witnesses, and weighed him the money in the balances. So, I mean, they would have to take it and put it in the scale and 17. So I took the evidence of the purchase, the paperwork, both that which is sealed, locked up, sealed, no one can open, according to the law and custom, and that which was open. You, you've got your own copy. You can show it to anybody. And then there was document. You go to City Hall, and you've got to go into their vault. You've got to go into their files. No, I mean, you need permission to go in, or they may not allow you to do it. I remember in the city of New London where I grew up, you would go up to the person and say, Hi, I, I want the birth certificate of Stiley Hayward. They would go in, look it up, and they say, All right, go over to this file cabinet, this drawer, blah, 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 blah. You go over, and you look, and then you, you pull the card out. And then you bring it to them, and they make a certified copy. When I was in Norwich, Connecticut, when it came to the property, you went up through a window, I need this property for this address, and everything was done behind the wall. And they give you your copy. That's the open copy. That's the copy you get home. The one that you don't get to take 
is the one that stays with the with the city, the town. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch. And this is going to be the only really one that, that is with, uh, with Jeremiah. And it takes 32 chapters for him to show up. The son of Neriah, the son of Massa, in the sight of Hamil, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses that subscribe the book of purchase. So there is a book, and it's recorded before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. You know, it's remarkable there'll come in a day that God's going to bring that book out. Through Jesus Christ going to say, hey, that land over there belongs to Jeremiah. Here's the book. Here's the record. I charged my root before them saying, I, he gave an order. He gave instructions. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. So everything that Jeremiah is doing is by the word of God. The God of Israel. Take these evidences. The evidence of the purchase. Both which is sealed and the evidence which is open. And put them in an earthen vessel. That they may continue many days. A clay pot. And uh, the closest thing that people would look at that today would be the Dead Sea Scrolls. Those clay pots. Not that the Dead Sea Scrolls are anything, but you mention the Dead Sea Scrolls and people know them. So, Jeremiah is taking everything and he's put them, he, he wants them in a clay pot to protection. For thus saith the Lord, the host of God of Israel. Houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Now, I don't know if God told that to Jeremiah before he purchased, while he's purchasing, or after the purchase. But God is assuring Jeremiah that land will be your land. And you'll be back. Now, you don't hear anything of Jeremiah when Ezra and Nehemiah come back. Somewhere, I don't know if they ever found them. I'm not interested. I'll let God tell me. Somewhere there's in the ground a bunch of certificates, a bunch of evidence of purchases, if they haven't found them yet. Ascribed to the prophet Jeremiah that he has purchased some property for 17 shekels of silver. This is one of a few property transactions, property deeds recorded in the Bible. Abraham purchases a burial ground for his wife, Sarah, that passes on to Isaac, that passes on to Jacob. That that is recorded today, that area belongs to Abraham. There is a purchase that has been made by David where the dumb of the rock is today. God is going to pull the purchase price and the documentation of David to show that land don't belong to the Ishmaelites. It belongs to David. And David will pass it on to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Now, will you kindly move your piece of crap rock out of my area so I can put my temple and put my son to reign forever and ever. And by the way, you can take your God, Allah, and go to hell with him. Their rock is not as our rock. Their rock will be removed. My rock will sit on the throne of David forever. Hallelujah. How do I know that land is, is, is such? Because it's recorded twice in the Bible. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So, where would Now, when I had delivered the evidence and the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Jeremiah gets in a prayer, Ah, Lord God. He's in prison. 
He just made a deal with his family for a piece of property while he's in jail. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and earth by thy great power <coughs> and stretched out arm. Jeremiah was not into evolution. There is nothing too hard for thee. The religion, or I shouldn't say, the, the, the family, the heritage of the Jewish people is on the fact that a 100-year-old man and a 90-year-old woman had a baby. That's nothing hard for me. That's what God said. That's what Mary said. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands, and recompense the iniquity of the fathers unto the bosom of their children after them. A great, capital G, and mighty God, capital M and G, the Lord of hosts, is his name. Great in counsel, and mighty in work. For thy eyes are open to all the ways of the sons of men, Jewish and non-Jewish. To give everyone according to his way. Get their just result, uh, dessert said in the Bible. And according to the fruit of their doings, you will get what you reap and sow. That's Galatians 6 7 right there in the Old Testament. Which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. Jeremiah knows history. Even unto this day, look at all the things that God's had him do. And in Israel, among other men, other than Jews, and has made thee a name as it is this day. And has brought forth thy people out of the land of Egypt with signs, with wonders, and a strong hand, and stretched out arm and with great terror. Jeremiah knows history. And has given them this land. You know where Jeremiah is going with this. The land's going bye bye. And the children, the children of Judah that are in the land, God is angry with them. Which thou swear to their fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. And it came in and possessed it. History. Joshua. But they obeyed not their voice. Judges, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, Isaiah, Jeremiah. Neither walked in thy law. They have done nothing of all that thou commandest them to do. And Jeremiah knows that firsthand. Therefore thou cause all this evil to come upon them. Behold the mounts. That's the mount. That's the army is up against the walls of Jerusalem. Right now. They are come into the city to take it. Right now as he's speaking. And the city is given to the hand of the Chaldees. That fight against it. Because of the sword and of famine and of pestilence. What thou hast spoken is come to pass. Behold, thou see it. Alright? Is that not history? Is that not present day facts of Jeremiah? In jail. Look at the close of the prayer. And we're going to stop in verse 25. 26, the Lord will answer. But look at the closing in the prayer. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, now, God didn't say, O oh Lord God. That's Jeremiah. Thou hast said unto me, O oh Lord God. Buy thee the field for money, and take witnesses. For the city is given unto the hand of the child. Look at Jeremiah. 
Lord, <laughs> this city's gone. Look, I can see them coming over the town, over the walls right now. And you wanted me to purchase this property? You know, people say, no, you ought not lack faith. You ought to be stronger in faith. If you lack faith, you know, what's Jeremiah doing right there? Oh, Lord God, what did you just have me do? Oh, no, they're not. Listen, I've been preaching on the street. I've handed out gospel tracts. I have witnessed to people. And I have to, sometimes I look at that like, what was that? I had one time I was in prison. Prison ministry. I was talking to this man, and he was a pastor. And we talked for a couple weeks. And the guy was setting me up. And I forget the whole thing now, but at the last moment I, I, I dealt with this guy, this guy stood up and, and he bawled me out, screamed me out, and rebuked me out, and blah, 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 blah. I sat there, well, Lord God, what is this all about? And the Lord's going to answer in a moment, Lord willing. And the Lord said, listen, and the Lord said, i got something for you to say. And the Lord did not appreciate that guy treating me like that. I could have dealt with other people. I could have told the, the correction of, hey, hey, listen, send this guy away, bring somebody who's more serious. But I didn't even know what was happening. And it got to the point, that guy screamed and boot me wrong and blah, 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 blah. Angry. And he started walking away from the table like, ha ha, I won. I said, wait a minute. I said, wait a minute. I was still sitting. I said, wait a minute. Hold on. Let me say, you got your word. I said, let me finish and I'll let you go. What's that? I said, you're a pastor of a church. Said, yeah. I said, I'll tell you what, I get to go home at the end of the day. I said, you're going to go back over to your bunks with the rest of the prisoners. And your testimony has ruined the name of Jesus Christ. I wouldn't be rebuking me. And every time in ministry, that, you, know, you know, whatever, I'm like, what on earth am I doing? <laughs> And then Saturday morning, guy come up to us. You know, he always asks for gospel tracts. He said, "I got some. I got something for you guys." And what's that? He said, "I want you to pray for me." Amen. Glory to God. I'm praying for. Him. You say, "Well, they hate you." One day they may come up. Now, this guy doesn't hate us. But, you know, one of those people that hate us, they may come up and say, you know, I got a problem. I, got, I, 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 I know I've, I, I need you to pray for us. Or it would be wonderfully great for one of them people that hate us or don't like us. Be, you know what? I, I, I finally take you at your word. I have believed on the Jesus that you preach. You don't know. Jeremiah doesn't know. I'm going to leave you hanging. Jeremiah has come. Oh, God, why did you have to? You know, I've been saved since 1987. And I got to admit, in the ministries, I thought, you know, I knew it all. I'm 53. I'm going to be 53 years old. And I, I've come to the conclusion in 2021, I don't know it all. And I am not as strong as I thought I was. And there's a particular passage in the scriptures I've held in my life to recently. And a particular passage in the scriptures is, Lord, I believe. Lord, help my unbelief. I ain't there yet. I don't have all the full faith. I've talked to people who do. Well, they think they do. I've talked to some prideful, arrogant people, pastors. I'm glad their life is so wonderfully great and without problems or that. But you don't know what goes on behind the scenes. Jeremiah is in prison. 
He's been, he, listen, he trusts God. He trusts God enough to do what God told him to do. And then he comes up at the very end of his prayer. And, you know, he butters God up. God, you're wonderfully great. God, you've done great things for us. Why did you have me buy that property? I've been, this year has been terrible for me. And I, I was at a church and I, I write things, I say things. Oh, no, I'd be saying, oh, no, I'd be feeling like that. Job did. Elijah did. Paul. I believe Paul was spiritually suicidal. That man got rocked to death, being stoned to death, saw glory. Got up and went right back to the city. I think Paul wanted to be stoned, killed, so he can go right to glory. I mean, he said the words were to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. I've tried and tried and tried, but the Lord won't have it. It's more evil for me to be here. And I look at these men that rebuke me like, you know what? Maybe God hasn't turned up the burners on you. You can preach about Peter denying the Lord. And, oh, I guess you've never been there. I guess you're just so perfect. You're so wonderful. You're so great. Yeah, you're allowed to sing in church age. <laughs> 